Hey guys, Dr. Dan here. Uh, I'm really excited to be presenting today's topic, which is the topic of focus. This is something I've got a lot of questions on when it comes to parents working with their young ones about how to get them to sit and focus. So today I'm going to be delving into the topic. Uh, for those of you who are joining me probably from the Instagram page or some of the other platforms, if you're not already subscribed, feel free to hit the subscribe button now. It's going to be a lot of good content I'm going to present. Now, focus, I thought we'd just start with the general definition. The ability to concentrate attention on a specific task, okay? And as parents, when we think about our children, a lot of us think our children have trouble focusing, okay? When you think about it, I want you to think about when your children are trying to do something like math or reading and you're trying to get them to focus attention versus if they're sitting there either, you know, watching YouTube or playing soccer. It's oftentimes not the issue that the children have trouble focusing. It's that they have trouble focusing on the things we want them to focus on and they have trouble focusing on the things that they should direct their attention to. But any parent knows if you turn on either a video game or a YouTube show that your child really likes, your child has no trouble focusing on that. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how a, a child's brain processes different themes and how to understand what struggles they may be having with focusing. And as I said before, most children can focus. They can focus on video games, YouTube channels, the issue is them focusing on the content and the material that we want them to focus on. And so we're gonna talk about different states of the mind that should really help with that, okay? So let's jump in. First thing to understand when it comes to the concept of focus is that the brain has different states. Two of those states are particularly important when it comes to how children sit down and direct attention to work, okay? The two general states, one's considered the mind-wandering state, and the other is considered the central executive state. The mind-wandering state is oftentimes what you see with children when they're, you're trying to get them to do work. Their mind is just jumping from one topic to the next. They're distracted by things in their environment. They're unable to actually direct their attention uh, to the work at hand. This mind-wandering state is actually a state that promotes a lot of creativity. Okay, It's you know designed, right? It's designed to broaden the horizon and the amount of things that children are aware of. Imagine a child who did not have this mind-wandering state. Literally, a gorilla could walk into the room, something that could be a threat to them, and they wouldn't be able to direct their attention to that. Or they may not have the creativity to come up with a story. So this mind-wandering state actually has and serves a purpose. It just does not serve a purpose when we're trying to do work, okay? So let's look at the other state. The other state is called the central executive state, or the central executive network. A lot of uh, neuropsychologists have described this as the state that basically takes over and allows us to do goal-directed activities or behavior, okay? For example, well, if you want your child to, you know, do a set of math problems, that requires that central executive network to essentially be in place in order to get that child to sit, focus, and complete the task at hand. Now, the real balance is in struggle with most children is that they're constantly going between this mind-wandering state and this central executive state. We want them here, and when they get bored, they want to be here, okay? And so I think it's important to understand that this is oftentimes the struggle, okay? You're trying to figure out how to get kids mostly in this state, and then if they happen to fall into this mind-wandering state, getting them to snap back out of it so that they can then focus here. And the way I would look at it is there are times when a child you want a child in the mind-wandering state. You know, when they're relaxed, they're doing something that requires a lot of creativity. But oftentimes, if you're uh, focused on goal-directed behavior, the key there is to have them in the central executive state. So that's a little bit about what's happening oftentimes when a child is distracted or unable to focus, okay? So uh, the next section I'm gonna talk about is how to essentially uh, get make sure that you assess a child's ability to focus. So. Before even trying to develop or improve a child's focus, it's always good to get a good baseline of where a child is in their process of focusing. And like most things, it's not gonna happen overnight. This is like a muscle that you have to exercise and in time will get stronger and stronger and stronger. One of the best ways to assess a child's ability to focus, believe it or not, is actually through meditation, okay? If you ask a child to sit in just a five to 10 minute meditation session with you, that child's ability to just to sit still, sit quietly, and focus on absolutely nothing probably closely reflects where they are in their focus. 
So if you haven't done this, what I would highly recommend after this video, just you know, pull up a YouTube video on meditation, okay? And then just sit with your child and then see how they do. That will give you a baseline for your child's ability to just focus, to actually sit still and direct their attention to the task at hand. For most children, if you try to do this activity, you're gonna find after a certain number of minutes, they're gonna be all over the place, they're gonna get up, they're not gonna to wanna to do it. So that gives you a baseline, okay? So as we talk about some of the activities that are meant to improve focus, I wanna make sure that we always use that as our baseline and in time, reassess that to get to the point where we understand that or we can at least see some meaningful uh, growth. Okay. So now, before we talk about how to improve focus, I wanna just talk about all of the things that are probably impacting your children's ability to focus, okay? Here, uh, you know, don't judge by drawing, uh, we have a makeshift child. These are all of the factors that are probably affecting your child, okay? When your child sits and is trying to do work or focus on what you're trying to get them to focus on, all of these environmental factors essentially change their ability to actually direct their attention at the task at hand. Uh, for those of you who don't know, even if you look at YouTube, there are about 6,000 hours of video that are uploaded every hour on YouTube, okay? Even for adults, you've probably ever been in a situation where you're trying to watch a movie, yet you find yourself constantly checking your phone, okay? And so the amount of things that are competing for our children's attention has significantly increased. Sometimes like I think that, you know, kids today are not as able to focus as we were. That's probably not the case. You know, our ability to focus from an evolution standpoint is probably been the same over the course of the last 30 to 40 years. But what's drastically increased are the number of attention, distractions, the number of things that are competing for attention. So for example, you know, YouTube, for example, child who's sitting there watching YouTube, thinking about the next show, while you're trying to get them to learn math and do addition subtraction, they're focused on the show that's coming up. Toys, kids are constantly distracted by toys just in their environment, thinking about toys that they'd rather play with, friends, what play dates they may have, what their playmates said about themselves, their clothes. These are just some of the basic distractions. And then things about the environment, whether your child's working in a noisy environment, an environment where there are other kids playing, an environment where somebody else is not focusing. These are all things that are gonna take away from your child's ability to focus. And this is what younger children have to deal with. As you get to older children, then you have the biggest factor I would say in today's society, which is social media. Remember that, social media. And so with older children who are now at the age of social media, in addition to all of these things that are distracting from their ability to sit and focus, you have social media. This is why I think it's so important to work on a child's ability to focus, especially at an early age. Once you have their ability to focus to develop, all of this, these distractions will still play somewhat of an impact but hopefully a more muted impact on their ability to focus. So with that said, I'd like to now talk about four activities that you can do to help your child improve their ability to focus, okay? The first one is obvious, okay? But removing all distractions from an environment is gonna be important to allowing your child to focus, okay? When you think about where your child is working, are they in an environment that is free of toys? So that way, as they're working, they're not constantly looking at the toy that they'd rather be playing with. Are they working in an environment where there's you know, noise, very few distractions, there's no TV on, uh, in an environment where you know, they have no access to things that are overly stimulating? That's gonna be the first thing that's really gonna allow your child to focus, removing all of the distractions, okay? When you think about it, even prior to starting to work with your child, if a child's been watching something very stimulating like YouTube or uh, their favorite show or playing a video game, the act of going from something that is so engaging to going to something that's probably less engaging in their mind like mathematics or reading is a hard transition for most kids. So planning the way you integrate their work with their lifestyle has become very important. For example, even with my kids, they get their rewards typically after the work has been done, okay? I prefer to actually work with them early in the mornings because they haven't been overstimulated at that point. Um, even before getting to work, I'll oftentimes give them a short break that allows them to reset. And during that break, they can play with 
things that are simple in nature, but they're not going to be watching TV or doing anything that stimulates. So that's the first thing that you can do to really help your child improve their focus. Just make sure that you're working in an environment that is very serene, very calm, free of all distractions, okay? Second thing that you can do is actually break down the lessons into shorter segments, okay? Like we talked about, focus is a muscle. And your child is not going to be able to focus the very first day you start working with them. But in time, it will get better and better and better. If you think about it, if you ask two children to do the same exercise, okay? And child number one, child number one here, and child number two, child number one has to sit and focus for a whole hour. Child number two is going to get three breaks in between. Child number one, probably, even if they are really in tune with their focus, at some point their ability to focus is going to wane and decrease. Okay, whereas child number two, their ability to focus is going to decrease somewhat. Then they can reset, come back focused again, go there, reset, and come back. So I highly recommend, especially when working with young children, especially when starting out at the very beginning, rather than having long sessions where children are going to flip into that mind wandering state just to keep the activity short. Keep it short, and then eventually, as you see that your child has built tolerance, you can increase the length of the assignments, increase the length of the work, and still get them to focus. But for starting with children, one of the, the second thing I'd highly recommend is just keeping the activity short, okay? Third activity you can do to really develop a child's focus is something I really enjoy doing with the kids. It's called distraction exercises, okay? So with the distraction exercise, the goal is actually to try to distract them, okay? And we kind of turn it into a game. So what I do is find work that is easier for them to handle, work that's maybe one or two grade levels above, because the purpose of, of this is not for them to do the work, is to not get distracted. And I'll tell them, we're going to play a game, okay? I'm going to have you do this work, and I'm going to do all kinds of things to break and disrupt your focus. I'm going to make noise, I'm going to pretend to be a bird or a gorilla, and if I break your focus, then I win, okay? And if they can maintain their focus and not even look up or stop the work, then they win. By playing games like this, which I call distraction exercises, you allow children to understand that even though they can't control their environment at all times, they choose whether they can stay focused on the task at hand or not. By doing these sort of activities, I've, been, they, I've found that I've been able to get my children to actually focus even when the distractions are happening because they understand that these distractions are not meant to keep them from doing the work at hand. So if your child is struggling with focus, you know, try to drop the level of the work down maybe one or two grade levels below so that it's not really arduous and then play, make a game out of it and try some of these distraction exercises where you, they know that the goal is for you to try to distract them. This way, later on, they understand what state they need to be in when they need to turn on that level of focus, okay? So that's the third thing, okay? The fourth thing is starting with children at a very young age. I'm really passionate about this, okay? The ability to focus is not going to be developed overnight. No matter how well-intentioned you are, it's going to take practice for children to be able to sit still and focus. But a child who doesn't have this developed by the time they start school is going to struggle. They're going to be the distraction in the classroom. They're going to be the ones who are going to need one or two grade levels to get their focus together before they can even start to learn. So while other children are learning from day one because they're focused, you know, your child or whichever child is struggling with focus is learning how to focus. And then maybe by a year or two into school, then they're actually starting to learn the material that they need to learn. That child's already behind. Okay. So starting early is the fourth and probably the most important thing you can do with your children. Okay. This is not going to happen overnight, but by starting early, you get a sense for what issues your child has with focus. Then you can get a sense for what things will motivate them. For me, I use a reward system. There's a separate video on that. If you haven't seen that, feel free to check out that video. You know, that reward system allows my children to understand what they're working for. And so whenever I need them to increase the level of focus, I just increase the reward that gets them back into that central executive and out of that mind wandering state. Okay. And as they transition into, you know, school, it's nice to know that they can flip into that state just by me increasing the reward.
Okay, so starting early with your children allows you to hone and develop their focus. It allows you to essentially see where they actually are, okay? Know what things are gonna get them to sit and focus. That way, even if it becomes an issue at school, you can have a conversation with the teacher and say, hey, these are the circumstances where my child focuses best. Is there any way we can make some adjustment to the school setup to better be able to better take advantage of his innate, his or her innate abilities? Okay. Uh, hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this uh, session on focus. I'm going to be doing specific examples of the lessons of the parts that I talk about uh, in future videos. So feel free to subscribe. Thank you guys once again for following. Take care.